Hello, everybody. Another Thursday, another Facebook Live Global Travel Update. Greetings on this uh, October Thursday. Hope you're having a great time. Lots to talk about, boy. It's getting crazier and crazier. You'd think at a time like this, travel would be slowing down, that there'd be you know, more people staying at home. Just the opposite. There's no more seasonality. Everybody's traveling. And it's about to get even crazier because the word I hear is that, you know, you know the United States has opened up the borders for vaccinated Europeans and other foreign nationals. The date, I believe, is going to be between November 8th and 13th that that will be announced. Already the bookings are through the roof. And that means they're all coming. They're not worried about seasonality. They don't care about traveling in November. They're not waiting until summer. It's called VFR traffic, visiting friends and relatives. But how many people have been denied that opportunity for more than a year and a half? So fasten your seatbelts. They are coming. Of course, there's another issue going on right now. That's caused. That's about vaccine mandates at the airlines. United, you know, back in August, told their 67,000 employees either get vaccinated by September 27th or you're going to get fired. Well, September 27th was last week. And last week, they were down to only about 593 employees that hadn't gotten vaccinated and were on the verge of being terminated. That's a 99 percentage rate, which is great. Uh, and the, the government and the Biden administration was basically pressuring the other airlines to follow suit with mandates of their own, which they've now done, but not because the U.S. government was pressuring them. It was a market decision because a lot of people were voting with their wallets based on who was getting vaccinated and who wasn't. You know, if you have a choice of flying on an airline where no none of the employees are vaccinated versus 100 percent, which one are you going to pick? That would be the 100 percent. So American Southwest and Alaska Airlines have now issued similar mandates to their employees, although they haven't set a date yet. But my intelligence tells me that'll be December 8th. They want to get through the Thanksgiving period. They're being a little selfish about that, but it is going to be December 8th. So be aware of that. Uh, now, let's talk about some serious numbers out there. Holiday bookings. If you've waited to book your holiday trip, you may be in trouble because holiday bookings right now, system-wide, are up about 30%, or actually 35% over what they were in 2019. That's serious. Uh, and if you take a look at just travel search on different websites, United Airlines, for example, has a 16% surge in that, just on search. And as a result, what has United Airlines announced? They're adding to the point of going to 3,500 daily flights a day in the U.S. in the month of December. That's unheard of in the fourth quarter. But they're doubling and tripling down. And they're eating, even adding 150 new flights to warm weather destinations. So what that means is in December of this year coming up, they'll be operating at 91% of the schedule they had in 2019. That's moving quick. So what does that mean? That means they're responding to demand. And what does that mean? Airfares right now, as I am speaking, are rising at the rate of about 3 to 4% a day. So for those of you who are procrastinating about your Thanksgiving plans or your or your, or your Christmas plans, you'll be paying the financial penalty for every day you wait. Now, I have a solution for this, and it's a no-brainer. Think about this. None of us are, are in the office, right? Right. Very few of us are in the office. We're all working remotely. We're not required yet to go in the office. Some of us are, but most of us aren't. Uh, and that our lifestyle has affected that. Well, who says you have to go visit your dysfunctional relatives over Thanksgiving? Go a week later. Right, carve the turkey. Then, no, you know, it's traditionally in, in in the in the travel industry there are two so-called dead weeks: the week immediately following that dysfunctional family get together called Thanksgiving, and the week following New Year's when you're just recovering. Well, travel after the you know the, the that last Sunday in November, or actually the last Tuesday in November, really, and then travel after the like the third or fourth of January, and even in pre-pandemic times you get a deal. Especially now you'll get a deal. But right now, average room rates for the Christmas holidays in this country are running about $579. That's way up over the $332 average it was back in 2019. So if you do the math, it makes all the more sense to, to wait a week, right? It's not about taking the kids out of school. It's about doing the right thing in terms of efficiency. And we've already learned how to work remotely. We've already learned how to live remotely, how to learn remotely. So take advantage of the fact that you don't have to be in the planes, trains, and automobiles sequel that usually happens every Thanksgiving, right? 
Remember that famous line from John Candy? Actually, or maybe it was Steve Martin. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> okay, moving along. Uh, lots of things to talk about. Our movie, our show, Hidden Turkey, premiered uh, earlier last week, and you can still see it. It's on many PBS stations around the country. And in fact, as of today, it's also available on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. So in the shameless self-promotion department, let's roll the trailer. Get set for a journey you've never taken. This is amazing. I'm Peter Greenberg, and I'll show you a country you never really knew. Ooh, hot. From Roman ruins to downhill races, we'll see how surprising this old and new country really is. This is what I came for. There are countless treasures, all hiding in plain sight. And I'll show them to you. <laughs> Welcome to Hidden Turkey. All right. So much for the shameless self-promotion, but I hope you get a chance to see the show. We will be doing other ones. You can also see one of our other shows, Hidden Poland, also on Amazon Prime. And coming up, we'll be shooting Hidden Ireland, Hidden Canary Islands, Hidden Portugal. And of course, our mandate for those shows, no gift shop, no trip advisor logos, and no tour buses. We're going to show you the things that are not in the guidebooks and brochures that are accessible to you if you just knew about them, and we're going to share them with you. So I hope you get a chance to see that show. Uh, lots of other stuff to talk about today. Uh, United Airlines, I talked about the Manning Roots, but listen to this. They were just fined $1.9 million by the U.S. Department of Transportation for tarmac delays. Remember that rule? Well, it was a great rule. It basically says that if an airline pushes back from the gate and you're on the plane, and they keep you out on the tarmac for more than three hours without returning to the gate, they're liable to be fined up to $27,000 per passenger. So even on a, on a 737, we're in seven figures. Uh, and remarkably, even though the airlines complained that they'd never be able to do it, and this is terrible and it affected their way of doing business, the number of fines that have been assessed since the tarmac delay rule went into effect, maybe four, this is probably the fifth one. So it's working. Now, another interesting story about this fine which is a story that we're pursuing, that I'm doing uh, for CBS, is this. You hear stories all the time that the FAA has fined an airline for maintenance violations, or in this case, the DOT has fined an airline for tarmac delay violations. Do the airlines ever pay those fines? Is United Airlines ever going to write a check for $1.9 million because the DOT fined them that? Remember, the DOT has asked for a fine of $25.5 million against Air Canada for not refunding your money during the pandemic. Is Air Canada ever going to go to their pockets and come up with $25.5 million? Historically, the answer would be absolutely not. They always negotiate and they negotiate them down. It's all about mitigation and they mitigate it so low that the airlines are always welcoming the fines as a cost of doing business. By the way, you ever see traffic, I mean, uh, uh, traffic tickets or, or, or parking tickets in New York City? It's the same deal. Do you know how many parking tickets FedEx gets a day in New York? It's in the hundreds of thousands of dollar amounts. Do they ever pay those fines? No, they negotiate them. So they know that going in. So what's the point of the fine? The truck's still going to double park. The planes are still going to be delayed. And the maintenance violations, I'm not even going to go there. So we're working on that story. If you're going to find somebody, Make them pay the fine or don't have the fine in the first place. More on that in the next couple of weeks. One other piece of news before I get to your questions. Uh, everybody keeps asking. The latest is that the GEM, the Grand Egyptian Museum, will open in Cairo by the end of January. So plan accordingly. All right. Let's go and start. To, hello to Patrick. Who I'm assuming is in, in Los Angeles. My friend Peter in Rwanda. Love that. Alyssa Ainsworth with her father, the legendary Hugh Ainsworth. Do your homework, guys. Google that Google that name, Hugh Ainsworth. He was my bureau chief at Newsweek at, uh, back in the 70s in Houston. What a great history he's had. Talk about one of the great storytellers. We send all our best to you and, of course, to his daughter, Alyssa. Hello, Carmen. Uh, ah, uh, Susie's leaving in two weeks for an Eastern European river cruise. Dress warmly, but you'll have a great time. Mia says hi from Irvine. Tampa. Carmen says hi from Tampa. Robin's always in Williamsburg, but she's counting down her trip to Hawaii. Aloha to you. Uh, 
Ah, Otto's following from Tanzania. As you know, we've spent a lot of time there with your president, and we're coming back to finish the piece, which will be airing next year on PBS and then on Amazon Prime, the Royal Tour of Tanzania. Uh, Terry saying hi from Battle Creek, the serial capital of America. Um, all right. Louise says, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, and by the way, speaking of uh, where, the, where our radio show is going to be coming from this week, I'm going to show you a, a picture I took at a storefront window. Let's roll that up there right now. It's coming. We hope. I'll wait. Because I want you to guess. Oh, there it is. Anybody ring a bell on this one? We have all the baseball cards your mother threw away. I can relate to that. At one point, I had a Mickey Mantle and a Roger Maris and an Orlando Cepeda and a Marv Throneberry and a Jimmy Pearsall and a Hank Aaron. I could go on and on. And one day when I was away at college, my mother decided to do a, a gorilla raid in my closet and threw out all the baseball cards. I, I can't begin to tell you how many of my friends had the same experience. So where was this sign hanging? Where it's supposed to hang. In Cooperstown, New York, the home of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And so our radio show this week, appropriately enough, since we're watching the playoffs, is coming from the Baseball Hall of Fame this Saturday uh, between 10 and uh, 1 p.m., 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Check your local listings. We also stream it live on petergreenberg.com about 10.05 Eastern Time because so many uh, local stations do news and weather in the first part of the hour. I hope you'll join us. And we're going to have some major Hall of Famers on the show, including the Wizard of Oz. That's right, Ozzie Smith, for those of you who remember the St. Louis, Louis Cardinals and his famous flip. Uh, great stories to be told this coming Saturday, day after tomorrow, on Ion Travel on CBS. Check your local listings. Okay, back to you guys. Um, Louise is checking in from Florida, Jackson, the North Carolina mountains. Um, ah, we met in Kigali, Rwanda when you were in town activating the Royal Tour. Okay, now he's in Cape Town. Hello, Rick. Hello from Detroit. Steven says, I've tried to watch you through Apple TV. I cannot. Takes you to Amazon Prime. Well, guess what? You can you can see it there. Um, uh, I guarantee you the shows are there. Uh, okay. Louise wants to go to Kurdistan. What's the best time before Christmas? There is no best time before Christmas. You want to go in May, June, and July. Uh, that's before Christmas. Uh, Joseph is joining me from Nairobi. Jumbo. Okay. I, I, I have my favorite sign hanging on my door at, at my house. And Joseph, you'll appreciate this, speaking Swahili. And the sign says, Mobwakali. You know what that means in Swahili? <laughs> Beware of the dog. Uh, all right. Lorena, how are you? Um, all right. Uh, Jumbo to Joseph. We got a lot of Jumbos today. Uh, ah. Patty says she saw John Candy filming Uncle Buck. Go back and watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. It's one of the it's one of the annual rituals you have to watch, right? Um, okay. Ah, uh, Colleen Casey said I bought my plane tickets to San Diego for our annual friend celebration of Thanksgiving at the time you said to do it, so I got them for dirt cheap. You should consider getting to the stock market. Thank you, Colleen, but I am sane. I would never do that. But watching airline prices fluctuate, I'm, I'm pretty good on that. So thank you for the compliment. Uh, all right, let's go back here to the top again. We got more coming in. Uh, give me one second. It's scrolling again. Give me a second here. All righty here. Oh, Danielle wants to know, what was so special when you came to Tanzania, mainland, and Zanzibar? It was all amazing. Um, you know, I can't give you one answer for that, Daniel. That's one of the reasons why we did the show with the president, because she took me around to places that nobody ever gets a chance to see in the tour books. We got to see it a special way with her. And, and, he, and by the way, the same mandate applies to everybody watching the show. What I did with the president, you could do as well. That will be airing in 2022. Uh, Ah, Patty Ford says, great on WTTW. That's right. It airs on WTTW. That means our, our all of our PBS shows on WTTW in Chicago. Um, okay. Uh, just return, uh, Michelle says, just returned from Greece on American. Their app, Verify, is not compatible with iPhones. Couldn't check in online. Look, I'm a big fan of manual override. 
You know, my favorite button to hit on my computer is print. I do not check in using anything digital because I don't trust the airline systems, let alone the phone battery that I use. So if you want to use something on your phone, great. Do yourself a favor, back it up, print it out. All those airline apps are meaningless if they're A, not compatible, or B, the system is not working, or you can't get Wi-Fi. How about a piece of paper? What a concept. Okay. Um, ah, Patty Ford wants to know the fastest way to travel to Bukiata Island. It's by ferry. We're talking about one of the islands in, in the Princess Island archipelago outside of Istanbul. It's, there are no cars there. You don't fly in there. You take the ferry from either the Asian or the European side of, uh, of Istanbul. And it's a great trip. My suggestion, if you saw our special already, is go to a local bakery early in the morning before you get on the ferry and buy about five or six simits. Anybody know what a simit is? It's the best Turkish bagel you'll ever get. Coated with sesame seeds. Get it hot. Get a bag. Get on the ferry. Go to the top deck. And you'll know why you're traveling with all that simit. Not for you to eat, but for some of your friends to eat. And you'll see who the friends are when you watch the show. Uh, Jack says, we'll be in Bergen, Norway in the fall next year for three days. Do you have any must-do recommendations for the area? I do. Uh, you can take the lift up to the top, which is a great view of the city from, from above. But great fish restaurants right in the harbor. Uh, I mean, and, and you don't have to go to the fancy ones. Go to the ugly ones, and you will not be disappointed, right? Can anybody say herring? Love it. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I have an Ant Kara says I have an Antarctica cruise leaving Ushuaia January 2nd. Uh, do I think it'll go? I do. I actually do. And for those of you who uh, who remember in the past, uh, there is in Ushuaia, which is the southernmost city in, in Argentina, one of the best restaurants I've ever eaten at in my life. And if you email me to peter at petergreenberg.com, I'll get you that name. It's run uh, by a husband and wife and their son legendary meals and amazingly affordable. Uh, hello from Delray Beach from Leslie. Hi from Tulsa. We love Tulsa. We just finished a shoot there. One of America's most underrated cool cities in terms of culture and history and music. Uh, and a little all my friends at the Mercury Lounge too, including my new best friend, the dog who hangs out there too. Um, okay, Diane wants to say hi from South Florida, from South Miami. Hello, Diane. Colleen's in Cleveland. Mary's in, in Copperstown. No, you're in Cooperstown. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, will fully vaccinated be redefined to also require the booster dose? And the answer to that is going to have to be yes, it will. Remember, there are certain countries around the world that won't let you in if you were vaccinated more than six months out. That booster shot is basically a renewal for you and keep the paperwork, right? Another reason not to laminate your CDC cards. You can hold them in plastic, just don't laminate them. Um, Okay. Louise says, what should I do with the baseball cards? Ha, send them to me. Are you kidding? <laughs> Every guy watching this show who grew up with baseball cards is saying the exact same thing. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I love this from my friend Jonathan Atkin, who, who we call captain because he is a Coast Guard captain. Listen to this, guys. He says, I flew on American Airlines from Chicago this past Monday. Aside from hitting wind shear that knocked two flight attendants to the floor, I snared the last Biscoff cookie while all the other passengers received pretzels. Way to go. And my fight with American continues. Why are you serving the little bitty Biscoff and only one of them? I came in on Delta last night. I got two. I'm just saying. Okay. Uh... <laughs> all right. I'm laughing about something else. Don't, don't, don't listen to me. Uh, any ideas for a river trip in Brazil? The ones I've found are so expensive. Yes. I'm going to give you another river trip, which is another Amazon tributary, but it's not in Brazil. It's in Ecuador. Do an amazing river trip down the Napo, N-A-P-O, down the Napo River, which is one of the, the Amazon tributaries. Amazing and much less expensive. Uh, okay. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm scrolling back up because there are too many people coming in here. Um, Hold on. Okay. I'm still scrolling, guys. Help me out. Uh, oh, Joseph wants to know with Mubakali. Well, I saw the sign in Nairobi. I loved it so much. 
that I actually went to the sign makers in the central market. These are the guys who carve things out of wood, the, the you know the big dark wooden signs with the white enamel painting in. And I asked I asked them if they they could make one for me, and they did. I have it on my my outside door uh, in New York, and of course nobody other than you knows what it means. But it's my little private joke. Uh, unless there's a dog walking around or a, or a burglar walking around who happens to speak Swahili. Um, Okay. Uh, Jeanette says, while Delta has issued the $200 per month penalty for unvaccinated staff, do you think they will eventually mandate it? I do. But remember, they've issued the penalty, but it doesn't kick in until November 1. So it hasn't happened yet, Jeanette. Um, okay. Will travel to Japan open before the end of the year? My guess is it will not. Uh, Japan, the whole South Pacific area, we're talking New Zealand, Australia, we're really talking February, March of 2022. Uh, okay. Uh, is Global Entry doing virtual interviews? And if so, how can I get one? Marley wants to know. Not to my knowledge, uh, although they are doing a little bit more online. Uh, now, they're now restaffing their offices now. They're not like hiding out anymore. So that, that wait period is, is being shortened. Uh, uh, Abraham wants to know, oh, hello from Nairobi again. Uh, ah, here's, hold on a second. Lisa wants to know what's the best time to visit Chicago and any favorite restaurants. I okay, I love this question. Chicago is America's best large underrated city, bar none. So I don't care about going to Chicago in January and February. I'll go. First of all, unbelievable restaurants, unbelievable restaurants, especially in the neighborhoods, not necessarily on Michigan Avenue. Uh, there are so many, honestly. But for me. Uh, you'll never see me say I'm not going to Chicago because it's too cold or too windy, okay? Uh, I go to Chicago every chance I get. It's a great city. Uh, and, uh, ah, Ellen says she got two Biscoffs on United. Way to go, Ellen. Next time, take a photo. Uh, okay. Ah, Mary Jo said she, from Pennsylvania, she got her renewed passport back in one month. Things are getting better. Wow, congratulations. Uh, okay. Uh, Jack wants to know, do I think cruises to Singapore, Australia, New Zealand will be back to normal in late 2022? They'll be back in late 2022, but they won't be back to normal. Uh, Jew saying hello from Japan. Um, okay. Um, do I see vaccination requirements staying in place for river cruises through the end of 2022? COVID is a virus that we are not going to eradicate. We're going to manage it. And part of that management protocol is showing vaccination. Uh, when I was a kid, I had to take a polio shot. And I had to show that, that proof of it unless, before they let me go to school. So I think we're going to be with those cards for a while. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Mia says, I give the Biscoff to whoever's sitting next to me on the flight. Priceless to see their excitement. Whoever knew that we'd be so excited about a stupid cookie? That gives you an idea of what we really value on flights, doesn't it? Right? We're not valuing the, the wine list or the food or, or the seats or the in-flight entertainment. No. We're sitting there counting down the minutes till we get to have a cookie, if we get one at all. So there you go. Um, ah. Global Entry gave me my renewal without an interview. Elizabeth says that. Wow. Do you know what? Elizabeth, email me to peter at petergreenberg.com. Tell me more. I want to investigate that. Um, okay. Hold on a second. Uh, ah, people are, are agreeing with me about Chicago. Absolutely. Oh, and Madison, Wisconsin. For those of you who follow me, you know I was in Madison and Chicago last week. Uh, I did I did our Facebook Live from the Palmer House in Chicago last week. Love that place. What great history. Remember, they invented the brownie. Uh, and then I drove up to Madison. And uh, next week, I'm going to tell you a very interesting story about what happened when I tried to book a hotel in Madison online. And a lesson that I learned that I should have learned a long time ago. But I'm going to share it with you. The reason why I'm not telling you that whole story today is because the story is still, still evolving. There are a lot of uh, other shoes to drop on this one, but uh, let's put it this way. I've declared war and uh, get ready for this one. So next Thursday, actually, I take that back. Next week, we're doing it on Wednesday. Our Facebook Live will be next Wednesday 
you'll hear my hotel story from Madison, Wisconsin. So not only did I have a very interesting and eye-opening experience with a hotel booked online in Madison, Wisconsin, I also got to see the Badgers get their asses kicked against Michigan on the Saturday football game. I'm really sorry, but guys, you know I love the Badgers, but you know what? Why is it that your only offensive play is let's run it up the middle? What are they doing? A rerun of the movie Newt Rockney? This is not how you win games. All right, I'm not going to dwell on that, but right now I'd have to say the Badgers do not excel in offense or defense or special teams or food at the game. Okay, I still loved it. I still went. We still got our asses kicked. Uh, more on that later. We're playing Illinois this week, and if we can't beat Illinois, then you know how bad we are. This reminds me of when I was a student there when we won no games, but we still filled the stadium every week. You know what? You want to know why? Because we wanted to see which inventive way the team would come up with to lose. We knew we were going to lose. We just wanted to figure out how we were going to do it. And by the fourth quarter, everybody was throwing empty bottles of Southern Comfort and toilet paper. Sometimes by the third quarter, uh, not pretty. Uh, but we finally went to a couple of Rose Bowls. And the last 10 years, we've gone to three of them. I've been to all three, and we lost all three. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Maybe I just shouldn't go. Anyway, we'll see what happens with Wisconsin and Illinois this week. But uh, anyway, Chicago and Madison, two of the great cities. Seriously. Um, okay. Lindy says, what if I already laminated my vaccine card before the booster? Not the end of the world. You're going to get another card with your booster. Just don't vac Just don't laminate that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sonny says, <laughs> Sonny's in Nairobi. My dog barks every time I say something in Swahili. Okay. Try Mowakali. See if it works. Okay. Um, keep going here. Hold on. Okay. Got a great deal. Oh, wow. That is a great deal. Okay, Robert, nicely done. Um, all right, I'm going to, here's from Gina. I'm going to Vancouver and Whistler for leisure travel in a couple of weeks. I hope everything goes smoothly. It sure seems like they still have pretty stringent requirements for vaccinated U.S. travelers. Not if you're flying. You still can't drive across. It makes no sense. But Canada is opening up. Uh, I mean, it's opened up, but it's getting better. Um, Evelyn wants to know, Cruising in April 2022? Absolutely, but book it now. They're selling out. Very loyal repeat cruisers are, are, are getting those cabins, so do it now. Uh, hey, J.E. Kilgore says Madison in the summer is phenomenal. Again, I'll go to Madison in February. I don't care. It's that good. But Madison in the summer, remember, it's a city surrounded by four lakes. You go out to the Memorial Union to sit out there on Lake Mendota. Oh, the best. Uh, okay. I'm looking down here. Ah, okay. And uh, Missy said she loved the Palmer House lobby bar. One of the reasons to love love the lobby bar area of the Palmer House. Look up. What an amazing ceiling. They've restored it beautifully. All right. Now, a couple of other things we got to talk about before we get to your other questions. Let's go first to the photo of the week. And here it comes. Beautiful photo taken by Pam Garfield with her Canon SX40. And the story about this, it's grandfather and grandson, generation to generation on the streets of Jerusalem. Grandfather walking hand on hand with his, with his grandson. Uh, nice when you can get a picture like that when there are not crowds on the street. So Pam, nicely done. Love that picture. And especially love that it was in black and white. There's still a future for black and white, folks. When it's appropriate, this is a good one. If you've got a photo that you think is going to qualify as the photo of the week, you know what to do. You send it to me, peter at petergreenberg.com. And if we love it, everybody gets to see it as well. Pam, thanks again for sending it in. Let's go to some of the questions you asked. This came in from Amy. Is New Zealand reopening to tourism soon? It is not. Again, we're talking January, February, March of next year at the earliest. Uh, Lori says, can I go to Aruba with my kids if they're not vaccinated? How old are the kids? That's the key. You didn't tell me that? I can't answer it. Uh, Okay, Mike says, looking to travel to Botswana, any recommendations? Well, yes. Uh, listen, you got to get out of the Chobe River. Uh, I, I like the Moana Lodge. You'll see the largest herd of elephants you'll ever see in the world. It's well worth it. Uh, and uh, a lot of airlines are now flying to Botswana, including Qatar. Great flights out of Doha. You check it out. Uh, 
Aubrey, so the Canada mandated vaccines to travel. Does any other country do this? Yes, uh, the Czech Republic is doing it. And a number of other countries in Europe are about to do it. Uh, so, you know, when they say they're mandating vaccines, what they're saying in the sense is that if you have a vaccine, if you've been vaccinated, you can go, right? So all the European Union countries have basically said, if you're vaccinated, you can go, with the exception maybe of Sweden that still hasn't figured out why they made their decisions that they made back in February and March of 2020. Uh, I'm waiting for a report from Sweden on that. Why they would ban vaccinated Americans right now is beyond comprehension. Uh, I don't get it. Okay. Uh, in your opinion, this comes from Jim, uh, which destination is the highest risk for COVID-19 right now? Well, I can only give you a qualified answer to that if you're vaccinated or if you're not vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, the answer is every destination, including the including United States. But if you are vaccinated, my unprofessional medical opinion, remember I'm not a doctor, is that if you've given if you've been given both vaccinations and you're healthy and you have no pre-existing medical conditions and you're wearing the mask when you need to and you're playing by the rules. I don't think any place is off limits to me. I really don't. I mentioned to you a couple of weeks ago, I came back from Tanzania when we do, we did it, we shot our most recent Royal tour and the vaccination level there is less than 5%. And we did not have a problem because we played by the rules and we were vaccinated. Okay. Fiona says, I'm flying back from Paris and I'm wondering what test I need. Should I get tested at the airport? No, don't get tested at the airport. Check with your hotel. Many of them will test you on premises. And you don't have to necessarily do a PCR, an antigen, a rapid antigen test will be accepted by U.S. authorities to qualify for that 30, that 72-hour uh, negative test that you have to do prior to your return to the United States, okay? Uh, okay, Scott wants to know, where can I stream the Take Me Home episode with Danny DeVito? You can't yet. You will be able to do that in the future. We're going we're gonna to get them all online. Uh, Danny DeVito, Ted Danson, um, Andy McDowell. Harry Connick Jr., Dolly Parton, um, and uh, Jeff Daniels. We'll get them up uh, in the next couple of weeks and we'll let you know, okay? And uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, here's one from Ivy. Uh, airline lost my luggage last week. How can I get my money back that I paid for the check bag? That's an easy one. You paid for a service you did not receive. You paid for it with your credit card. Dispute the charge. The first thing you do is you call the airline and see if they'll just refund it. If they want to play games, dispute the charge. And if they want to play games, you email me, peter at petergreenberg.com. That is a no-brainer, okay? By the way, Ivy, tell me, how long did they lose your bags for? Was it more than a day? Was it more than two days? Let me know. Uh, okay, Elizabeth wants to know, are flight delays still occurring just as frequently? I'm taking a domestic Southwest flight at the end of the month with a short connection window. How much time are you allowing between connections these days? It's not how much I'm allowing. It's how much time you should allow. And that's this. Uh, the, the delays are getting less because we're in the fall months. It's not the summer peak. However, they're still there. What you need to know is this. Uh, get, a, get a website uh, or an app called FlightAware. You can actually track your flights by tail number and by flight number. And you have an idea where you're going. You say you have a tight connection. I'm assuming you're connecting to a Southwest flight. And if that's the case, it shouldn't be much of a problem. But again, uh, track the flight and make make sure if you can all do it at all possible, you're flying on the first flight of the day. That way, if the connection is missed, there's still hope. All right. All right. More questions for you guys. Hold on. I'm going to scroll back up. Okay. Hold on. This machine is playing games with me. I'm scrolling down now. All right. We're working on it. Still working on it. A lot of global entry questions. Uh, okay. Pat says, the pharmacy just wrote an info on my laminated CDC card, and I put a piece of clear tape over to protect it from smearing. Really? That's like a bad arts and crafts project in high school. Don't ever let them do that. Get a new card. Anybody can write over a card. You don't want somebody saying that you're you're fraudulent, okay? Um, okay. Ah, Robin liked the photo from uh, from from Israel. Great. Uh, 
Jack says, do I think the cruise lines will make it easier to fulfill COVID testing requirements since they change all the time? Uh, would hate to miss a cruise because of testing delays. You're not gonna miss a cruise because the cruise lines have their own medical facilities and are providing those tests on board. The real question you need to ask is, are they charging you for it? My understanding is most cruise lines will not charge you for the return test, the one that's you know the compliant one for the 72 hour prior to your return to the US. However, if you're not vaccinated and the cruise line lets you go on the cruise anyway, you will be charged to be tested every two days. And some of the tests are costing $150 each. Multiply that by the number of days you're on the cruise. And you tell me if the economic consequences are worth not getting vaccinated. Um, uh, Patty, Patty agrees with me on Cutter Air. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. Robin says she's going to the UK in late spring of 2022. Focusing on Wales and Scotland. Yeah, well, listen, there's so much I love about both. If you've not seen this movie before, I recommend it. It was Burt Lancaster's last movie, by the way. It was a real hidden little art film with music by Mark 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 Knopfler from Dire Straits. Uh, Peter Rieger was in the movie. Great movie called Local Hero, all about Scotland. Unbelievable. Um, and... Uh, I can't say enough about it. I, I don't believe in reincarnation. I really don't. But I truly do believe I lived in both Scotland and Ireland in a previous life. I can't explain it, but it's that strong a feeling. It, it drives me back there every time. Uh, in any case, uh, and you're also going to Wales. Wales, you know, it used to be the king of coal, right? There were coal barons, like there were oil barons in, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Coal barons. And then, of course, the mining stopped and Wales became an amazingly beautiful destination. Uh, take the train if you can from London, it's worth it. And then, then explore, uh, obviously Cardiff, but so many other places, all right? And if you, if, if you want, uh, go back to uh, uh, Amazon, you'll see all of our travel detective shows. Take a look at the ones we did in Wales. I think you'll be, uh, you'll be uplifted, I hope. Uh, okay. Mark Wexler says, greetings from Oxnard. Now Mark has to explain what he's doing there. Um, okay. Um, oh, one from Stephen. Do I think cruise ships are safe with COVID? I do. In, look, think about this. 100% of the officers vaccinated. 100% of the crew vaccinated. And if you pick the right cruise line, 100% of the passengers vaccinated. 100% compliance. Ventilation systems have been redone. The, the mandates in terms of physical design and floor space have been redone. You have to wear a mask in certain parts of the ship. It's okay. You can live with that. I've now done two cruises that we reported from, one on the uh, on the Celebrity Millennium and one on the Silver Sea, Silver Moon. No problemo. You're going to be fine. Uh, ah, Linda says, love local hero. Yep. Visited the location during my, my first visit to Scotland. The best. The best. Uh, Okay, do I think travel providers will start asking for booster shots as well as vaccine? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, Diana says, I uh, oh, she has COVID vaccine plastic sleeve protectors. Amazon sells clear vaccination card protector sleeves. Waterproof. Wear around the neck or carry with you. Have them. Okay. There you go. Uh, just don't laminate them. All right. All right. A couple of other housekeeping notes. Uh, and that is the radio show this week, in the middle of the playoffs from Cooperstown, New York, the Baseball Hall of Fame. Well worth the visit on the radio. Uh, and of course, you can always email questions to me if I haven't answered them today online, peter at petergreenberg.com. And we'll answer either online or on the radio show on Saturday. And of course, uh, watch Hidden Turkey. It's on PBS and many local stations. Check your local listings. It's also streaming on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus, I hope you get a chance to look at it. And I will see you next Wednesday, not next Thursday, next Wednesday from a distant remote location in the Caribbean. So that's as far as I'm going to get in terms of hints today, but we'll have a good time then too. So I'll see you next Wednesday. In the meantime, keep the emails coming. Travel safe. I'll see you next week.